So we're going to look at Ampere's law now, which is a bit like Gauss's law, except that it's for magnetic fields and it's a line rather than a surface integral. But let's start by considering both the electric field case and the magnetic field case, just because we're already so familiar with that electric field case. So for the electric field case, let's take a charge of plus Q, and we know that the electric field is given by E is equal to KQ on R squared times the radial unit vector to give it a direction, so it's directed away from that charge. Now for the magnetic field, let's generate that with a current carrying wire, carrying the current into the screen. So we'll let the current have magnitude I, and then we've seen that while well, the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire is given by B is equal to mu naught I over two pi R, and that these follow circular tangential paths, and we can work out the exact direction using our right hand rule. So what we're going to do now is work out the line integrals of these fields around a closed path. So we will be looking at, well, what is the integral of E dot DL around this closed path. Now in this case, at every point around that path, the electric field is perpendicular to our path, which is a circle. And so when we take the dot product between these two things, we end up with zero. Now in the magnetic field case, our magnetic field lines form circles, so they are parallel to the path DL. So we can write, well, the integral around the closed path of B dot DL is equal to the integral around the closed path of mu naught i over 2 pi r times dl. And so mu naught i over 2 pi r is constant around that path because the radius isn't changing around the path. So we can write this is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r times the closed, the integral over the closed line of dl. And then if we integrate over that closed line, well, it's just a circle, so that is equal to 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle, that's the length of our path. And so we've got, in this case, mu naught i over 2 pi r times 2 pi r, and those 2 pi r's cancel out, and we end up with the integral of b dot dl around the closed loop is equal to mu naught i. Okay, so that was really nice for circular paths. What happens if we have paths which are a little more complex? So imagine paths like these. Now with the electric field case, we've actually looked at this a bit previously when we were calculating the amount of work done by the electrostatic force on a charged particle as it moved. And we saw that the tangential parts are still going to completely cancel, be zero, because these are still perpendicular, the electric field is perpendicular to the path. But if we consider the radial parts, well, we end up with at the same radius that we started at. So in some parts, we'll be moving out and there'll be a contribution, but then in other parts, we move back towards the charge the same distance. And so these contributions are going to cancel out around that path. And we still have the integral of E dot DL around a closed loop is equal to zero. Now with the magnetic field case, it's a little bit more complicated. So let's split our path up into little sections. And let's just consider one little section of the path, which substends an angle d theta at the center of that path, so at that current carrying wire. And let's work out how much does this little increment, which substends the angle d theta, contribute to the line integral b dot dl. So considering our path, we'll need to know the path length, because what we're trying to work out is b dot dl, so we need to know what dl is. And in this case, because it's substanding an angle theta, it's got an arc length equal to r d theta. So we, it, it has to be circular over that part. If it's not circular, then we make d theta smaller so that everything is at the same radius over our little increment d theta. And for this increment d theta, we can have the path a distance r from our current carrying wire, so B is still equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. 
So we can say, well, B dl is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r times r d theta. And those r's are going to cancel out. And so this is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi times d theta. So that's the contribution to b dot dl from just that one little increment. But now we want to sum all our increments around our path. So in order to do that, we can integrate. So we're going to integrate around this entire path, the closed path. So that's equal to b dot dl around the closed path. And when we do that, we need to sum up all the contributions from the d theta from theta equals zero up to theta equals two pi. So we've got this is equal to the integral with the limit zero to two pi of mu naught i over two pi times d theta. And then when we do that integral, we've got this is equal to mu naught i over two pi. And then when we integrate d theta with the limits two pi and zero, this is equal to two pi minus zero, so just two pi. So we've now got mu naught i times two pi divided by two pi, which is equal to mu naught i. So this shows us that for any path, the integral around a closed loop, well, for any closed loop path, the integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught i. Now this expression is known as Ampere's law, and we can actually use it to calculate the magnetic field strength. So it's quite useful to use when there's lots of symmetry. So the approach we use to calculate the magnetic field using Ampere's law is very similar to the approach we use to calculate the electric field using Gauss's law. So the first step is to identify a suitable Amperian loop. So we're going to try and exploit symmetry as much as possible. Ideally, we'd like our magnetic field to be parallel or perpendicular to this path. We'll then need to calculate how much current is enclosed within the loop. So that's the I in this e equation. I is the amount of current inside that loop. And then what we can do is use our expression, the integral of B dot DL, to find our magnetic field B. So let's have a look at an example now. So what we're going to do is derive an expression for the magnitude of the magnetic field around and inside an infinite wire with a uniform current density and radius r carrying a current i. Okay, so we need to do this around and inside. So let's split our working space in half and let's start with around. So the first step we need to do is identify a suitable Amperian loop. So in order to do that, we're going to need a diagram. So here is our current carrying wire. It's got a radius r. And what we're going to do is choose an Amperian loop, which will be a circle, because we're trying to exploit symmetry as much as we can here. So let's choose a circle with a radius little r. And little r is greater than big r. So this is an Amperian loop outside of the current carrying wire. And the wire is carrying a current I. And let's have it carrying that into the screen. So we can draw some little crosses on there to show the direction of the current. So we've started by identifying our Amperian loop. Let's just write down the sentence about it. So the Amperian loop is a circle with radius r which is greater than the radius of our wire and then the next thing we need to do is work out well how much current is enclosed within the Amperian loop so all the current is within the loop so this tells us that the enclosed current is going to be i and now what we can use is our equation b dot dl is equal to mu naught i enclosed. And so this will just be mu naught i in this case. So in order to pull the magnetic field out the front of the line integral here, we're going to need to assume that the magnetic field is constant around that loop. Now that's reasonable in this case due to symmetry. So due to symmetry, we can assume that the magnitude of B is constant 
around the loop. So due to that, we can write well b times the integral of dl is equal to, let's work out what this integral is. So this is just the integral around this circle here, the line integral around it. So it's just the length of this circle, which is just the circumference, which is 2 pi r. So we can write well b times 2 pi r, and then we know that this thing is equal to mu naught i. So this tells us that the magnetic field strength B is equal to mu naught I over two pi R. And that's what we were asked to come up with an expression for B. So you can see doing it this way was so much faster than using the bias of art law. So this was much faster than using However, we can't use this in all cases because here we were exploiting the symmetry a lot. So next we're asked to find the field inside the infinite carrying, carrying wire. So for this case, we again have to start by identifying a suitable Amperian loop. So let's draw our wire here with radius r and assume that it has some uniform current which we've drawn is going into the screen. So once again, in this case, it's sensible to take an Amperian loop, which is a circle, but now we're taking our circle as inside our wire because that's where we're trying to find the magnetic field. So let's describe our Amperian loop in this case. The Amperian loop is a circle with radius r, which is less than the radius of the wire in this case. The next step is to work out how much current is enclosed, enclosed within this Amperian loop. So find i enclosed. That's a little bit more tricky in this case. So the enclosed current is going to be equal to the surface density of the current, the current surface density times the area. And so in this case, the current surface density, that's the total current divided by the total surface area, which is pi r squared. So this is the surface area of the wire. And then we multiply this by the area of our Amperian loop, which is pi r squared. So you can see these pi's will cancel out and we'll end up with an enclosed current i, little r squared, divided by big r squared. So now what we can do is use this with Ampere's law. So we've now got b dot dl is equal to mu naught times i enclosed, which in this case is i r squared on r squared. And what we're trying to do is find b. So once again, we can argue that our magnetic field is going to be constant around this loop due to symmetry. So due to symmetry, b is constant. So because it's constant, we can pull it out the front of our integral. So we've got b times dl. And once again, when we sum up all the length increments around the circle, we're going to get the circumference of the circle. So that'll be b times 2 pi r. And this is equal to mu naught times i r squared over r squared. So we can rearrange this and say, well, b is equal to mu naught i r squared divided by 2 pi r times r squared. You can see this r will cancel with one of these, and we end up with mu naught i r divided by 2 pi r squared. So we've now come up with an expression for the magnetic field inside a current carrying wire as long as it's got a uniform current density across that wire.